Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Jane's Fighters Anthology as we continue with the Jane's Information Database. Today, we will be going over the SU-35. Title, Sukhoi SU-35 or SU-27M. Type, Single Seat All-Weather Counter Air Fighter and Ground Attack Aircraft. Program, Experimental Version of SU-27 with Four Planes, Unit T-1024, Flew May 1985. First to six prototypes, successively T-10S-70, SU-27M, SU-35, flew 28th of June 1988. Another was exhibited at a 1992 Farnborough Air, Sh Air Show in final stages of flight testing early 1993. 11 prototype and pre-series aircraft, 701 to 711, built by September of 1994, of which 711 modified for thrust vectoring experiments. First flight at Zukovsky with nozzles fixed, 2nd of April 1986. Two more aircraft ordered in late 1995. It may indicate start of production of service development batch by Knapple at Komsomolsk on Amor. And actually, this did enter production and is in full service with the Russian Air Force and a few other countries around the world, I do believe. Design features, advanced development of SE-27, airframe, power plant, avionics, and armament all upgraded. Quadruplex digital fly-by-wire controls under development by Avionica, longitudinal static instability, tandem triplane layout with four planes, double-slotted flaperons, taller square-tip twin tail fins with integral fuel tanks, Reprofiled front fuselage for a larger diameter radar antenna and large tail cone for rearward facing radar. Twin wheel nose landing gear, asymmetric thrust vectoring nozzles under development for use on production aircraft. See SU 37 in addenda. Test with side stick controller on starboard side of cockpit of SU 27 test bed LMK 2405 are unlikely to lead to change from conventional center stick. Power plant. Two Saturn Luca AL35F or AL31FM turbofans, each rated for 137.3 kilonewtons or 30,865 pounds force with afterburning. Retractable flight refueling probe on the port side of the nose. Accommodation pilot only on Zvezda K36MD00 ejection seat. Avionics, radar, Phasotron N011 Zuck 27 multimode low altitude terrain following avoidance radar. Search range 54 nautical miles or 100 kilometers or 62 miles. In forward sector, 30 nautical miles or 55 kilometers or 34 miles rearward. Able to track 10 targets and engage four simultaneously. Phasotron Zuck PH phase array radar under development for later use. Search range 89 to 132 nautical miles or 165 to 245 kilometers, or 102 to 252 miles in forward sector. 32 nautical miles or 60 kilometers, or 37 miles rearward, with simultaneous tracking of 24 air targets and ripple fire engagement of 6. N014 rearward facing radar range approximately 2 nautical miles, or 4 kilometers, or 2.5 miles. May enable firing of rearward facing IR homing air to air missiles. Flight, fully automatic flight modes and armament control against ground, maritime, and air targets, including automatic low altitude flight and automatic target designation. Our PKB nav system includes laser gyro INS and gloss NAS GPS. Instrumentation EFIS with three color CRTs and HUD. Mission New type infrared search and track move to starboard, small external TV pod, all combat flight phases computerized. Shown at Farnborough with GEC for anti TIALD or Thermal Imaging Airborne Laser Designator. Night Adverse Visibility Pod fitted for possible future use. Self Defense Enhanced ECM, including wingtip jammer pods and radar warning receiver. Armament includes 130mm GSH 30 gun and starboard wing root extension with 150 rounds. Mountings for up to 14 stores, including R27 or AA-10 Alamo ABCD, R-40, AA-6 Acrid, R-60, AA-8 Aphid, R-73E, A-11 Archer, and RVV AE or R-77 or AA-12 Adder air-to-air -air missiles, as well as the KH-25ML 
or AS10 Garum, the KH25 MP or AS12 Kegler, KH29T or AS14 Kedge, KH31P or AS17 Krypton, and KH59 or AS18 Kazoo air to surface missiles. S25 LD laser guided rockets, that's S25, excuse me, IRS IR guided rockets. GBU-500L and GBU-1500L laser-guided bombs, GBU-500T and GBU-1500TV, 1500T TV-guided bombs, KMGU cluster weapons, CAB-500 bombs and rocket packs, maximum weapon load 8,000 kilograms or 17,635 pounds. Dimensions external, wingspan over ECM pods, 15.16 meters or 49 feet, 8 and 3 quarter inches. Length overall 22.2 meters or 72 feet 10 inches. 22.21. Wait. Why is there. I assume maybe the 22.21 is including. Oh, uh, the rear pod extension? I don't know. It's a little weird. <laughs> Height overall 6.36 meters or 20 feet 10 and a quarter inches. Weights and loading, weight empty, 17,000 kilograms or 37,479 pounds. Max fuel, 13,400 kilograms or 29,542 pounds. Max takeoff weight, 26,000 to 34,000 kilograms or 57,320 to 74,957 pounds. Max power loading, we're in 24 kilograms per kilonewton or 1.21 pound per pound force. Max performance, sorry, performance, max level speed at height. Mach 2.35 or 1,350 knots or 2,500 kilometers per hour or 1,555 miles per hour. At sea level, Mach 1.14 or 755 knots or 1,400 kilometers per hour or 870 miles per hour. Service ceiling, uh, what's that? 18,000 meters or 59,055 feet. Balanced runway length, 1,200 meters or 3,940 feet. Range with max internal fuel more than 2,160 nautical miles or 4,000 kilometers or 2,485 miles. G limit plus 10. Length 22.2 meters, height 6.36 meters, wingspan 15.16 meters, max takeoff weight 34,000 kilograms, max level speed 1,350 knots, max range 2,160 nautical miles, service ceiling 18,000 meters. And here you can see it bears some resemblance to the Su-33, actually, because of those four planes. But you can see it's kind of completely redesigned front where now the intakes are canted the other way out. They're canted outwards instead of inwards. They have a longer tail probe. You can see just how far out that extends because it's believed to carry both the rearward facing radar as well as potentially electronic countermeasures. Yep, she sure is the, uh, <laughs> the basically Russia's equivalent to the F-15E Strike Eagle, but... Alright, so with that out of the way for now, there's actually some videos, which is, uh, not the first for non-American aircraft in this game, but certainly a very rare treat, even if it is for a Russian aircraft. So let's go watch the design video. Until recently, the Su-37 multi-role fighter was treated as simply the most advanced prototype Su-35, featuring thrust vectoring and a slightly modified and streamlined fuselage design. Both Su-37 and 35 are considered to be the sixth generation derivatives of Russia's venerable Su-27 flanker. Developed by the preeminent designer general of the Sukhoi Design Bureau, Mikhail Simonov, the newly designated Su-37 could provide the Russian Federation with a dramatic new combat fighter for the 21st century. Early prototypes of the Su-37 were first flown in 1992 and later shown at the 1994 Farnborough Air Show. The Su-37 prototype is still being tested, with full production of the fighter anticipated to be underway by the year 2000. Worldwide interest in the airplane is high, with a reported sale to the United Arab Emirates already in the works. 
SU-37 features include advanced integrated avionics and flight control systems, rearward-facing air-to-air radar and rear-firing radar-guided missiles, and a max weapons load of over 17,000 pounds on 12 external stores. All right, and now for the maneuvers video, which that one's especially rare. We don't get many maneuvers videos, period. Powered by twin AL-35F bypass turbofan engines, the versatile and formidable SU-37 prototype is capable of supersonic speeds in excess of Mach 2, and yet is remarkably agile and highly maneuverable in a slower high angle of attack environment. In close combat scenarios, the SU-37 is among the few elite aircraft in the world capable of performing both the Cobra and Hook maneuvers. In the first instance, the aircraft can suddenly pull up vertical out of level flight and actually waggle its tail. In each case, the angle of attack may reach 120 degrees, with the aircraft showing no tendency towards stalling or entry into a spin. The SU-37 can also employ the deadly bell maneuver in combat allowing the pilot to frustrate the enemy radar lock-on, force the opponent to pass forward after vigorous deceleration, and then attack him immediately in his tail sector. These trick dogfighting maneuvers are made even more extreme and deadly with the added component of thrust vectoring. Alright, so I think that concludes our showcases for this week. So with that, thank you all for watching and stay tuned for next time and stay safe out there. And we'll see you then.